Okay, so, so today we want to uh, finish the voting algorithm and run also some simulation so that you can see how it works in practice. And uh, then we want to move uh, to something extremely important, namely maximum likelihood estimation, which is crucial for machine learning. So even though it involves a little bit of math mumbo jumbo, it is very much uh, worth knowing because statistical modeling uh, is the key for the big data, right? So uh, you really, okay, so the material that we are covering uh, is highly non-trivial, right? So please uh, don't rely just on camera recordings. Uh, uh, read the lecture notes because they are much more systematic and uh, uh, detailed. Uh, and uh, uh, if you are engineers, you know, until you scribble on the margin, you don't kind of quite get it. Uh, Right, so, and uh, uh, this voting business, uh, we used it uh, to aggregate uh, uh, stock, ma uh, stock market analyst data, and I'll, next semester I'll have a, a starting PhD who is a CTO of a hedge fund, uh, and he wants to use these kind of algorithms for their business. Uh, so if you are interested in finance, uh, you might want to consider these aggregation algorithms I can also get you access to uh, really serious data that is very expensive, but you can get it for academic purposes. Uh, it has massive amount of uh, uh, stock market data, including analyst recommendations and history of stock prices and uh, whatever, right? Uh, when you have a huge amount of data, it's all, you are almost guaranteed that the data will be inconsistent. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, it's out of date, uh, maybe there were entry errors, uh, and uh, so you want to kind of optimally aggregate that data in most reliable kind of snapshot of that information. And this is why we are doing these algorithms. That's one reason. The other reason is that uh, all of these algorithms were done by you guys, uh, students, my former students who took um, this class over the years, uh, and they were published in, you know, kind of big time journals, transactions on parallel and distributed systems and whatnot. So I want to tell you, uh, uh, so it's possible to do really good and publishable uh, work. And it's good to give yourself an early start. So, um, so this is a little bit of quantification why we are doing it. So what is the whole business with uh, this adaptive voting procedure? Uh, Okay, we need some space over here. <coughs> um, so you have voting lists uh, that can be maybe the candidates for your city council, right? So they can be people, or they can be number of stars uh, uh, for products, uh, right? But the point is that uh, in this election, um, there is a whole bunch of lists from which people choose their preferred candidate. And not necessarily every voter votes for all of the lists, uh, but every voter votes at least on a few of these lists. Uh, of course, the performance of the algorithm will be affected by sparsity. If, uh, uh, each voter uh, votes on very few, one or two lists, uh, you won't get much different than maybe some kind of mean, right? But uh, more votes are cast, the more robust the algorithm becomes. So, so these are the lists, uh, L1, L2, 
L3 up to Lm. And here you have candidates, uh, let's call them items. Uh, item 1, item 2, item 3, so item n uh, 1, because it's list 1, here it will be i n 2, because the number of candidates on all lists does not have to be the same. What is our goal? Our goal is to simultaneously obtain ranks of the candidates and the trustworthiness of the voters. What is, so you have to be careful what, uh, maybe the word trustworthiness is misleading. Here, trustworthiness denotes only how compliant the candidate is with prevailing sentiment, right? So this uh, does not <coughs> produce, so to speak, some kind of objective truth, a real gold standard, right? It produces just the most uh, representative estimate of the sentiment of the voters. But in many... <coughs> In many applications, that's exactly what matters, right? Even for stock market, you know, you saw, probably saw uh, uh, Amazon trades, the stock price is like 180 times uh, uh, the earnings or whatever was the measurement, which is totally ridiculous. Uh, any number that is above 2030 is considered ridiculous. So. It's simply Amazon is grossly overvalued. Even if they had spectacular success, uh, just from earnings, from profits, you can never make uh, your investment. But for some psychological reason of the crowd, uh, of the investors value unreasonably high the, the Amazon stock market. But that's objective estimate of the community sentiment. And it doesn't have to be objective of some objective value, so to speak. So our aim here is to aggregate uh, in the most objective way community sentiment. Uh, for example, if you are uh, ranking uh, movies, what is the absolute value of a movie? That makes no sense, right? But uh, a perception how much the public likes the movie makes perfect sense. So what do we, so we will have ranks of each item on the list. Let me see how I denoted it in the notes so that uh, uh, you, when you read the notes, you are not confused. So uh, rank uh, uh, L, I, L sub I, is uh, uh, the uh, rank, you will see in a moment what this is, the rank of uh, item I on list L, right? So this will be the scores of the candidates, uh, right? Uh, and then you have the voters, right? You have the voters uh, and then uh, all, or raters, how you want to uh, call them. So let's denote uh, by TR is uh, uh, the, oops, the trustworthiness values, right, in a way that the most 
objectively captures our idea of ranks and our idea of compliance with the community. And the method that uh, my student and myself proposed was as follows. So uh, you want trust of a rated R to be simply sum of ranks of all uh, items Li on list uh, such that R voted on the list L for item I. So here R arrows L I means um, voter R uh, voted on a list of candidates L uh, for item I, right? So this would be on this picture. This is your uh, rater or voter R, and if he votes here for I3, you would have, let's say this is later R1, you will have R1 arrows L1 I3. So on list uh, 1, uh, he chose item 3, right? So you want the trustworthiness of a voter to be some total of the ranks that the items that he voted for got. So he so this is now flow of information in this direction. This is what I was jokingly saying that uh, uh, you know the biblical principle that uh, uh, if you judge something or someone, you give opportunity to be judged yourself uh, how you judge others, uh, right? So by the same measurement as it says. Uh, <coughs> so you see in the Bible you can find the things about talking snakes and Adam and Eve uh, and how we got in trouble, right? But you can also find good algorithm design uh, tools. Uh, uh, so, so the trustworthiness, so we now judge each rater how much, how well items of his choice scored, right? So we are judging the raters by this formula. Uh, how do we compute the ranks now? <coughs> the ranks are computed as follows, rank L, uh, uh, sorry, rank of uh, item I on list I is equal to the following. Now, um, I will first write it in the form that we don't use it, and then we will a little bit improve it, but just to simplify things, it is simply sum of trustworthiness of all raters R such that R on the list L voted for I. So let's just uh, meditate upon this for a second. Um, just as we massage the Google matrix. So this makes perfect sense, right? Uh, so each rank of each object, uh, right, is obtained by totaling the votes. But the votes are not worth one. The vote of each rater is worth its trustworthiness. Uh, right? So if I am highly compliant voter, then my trustworthiness will be large, 
So the, uh, uh, the impact of my vote to rank of items will be accordingly large. So you see, just in this form, this is not a way to compute. Because what's the problem with this definition? Why these two equations are not enough to compute? The ranks and trustworthiness. What do you think? Yes? Uh, each of them is determined, uh, like, is dependent on the other equation. Exactly. It's a vicious circle, right? Uh, ranks depend on influence, trustworthiness of raters. But trustworthiness of raters also influences the ranks. Right? So this is just like in Google PageRank. It's absolutely identical situation. Just like in Google PageRank, um, these are just system of equations in variables TR and rows, uh, row LI, that we would like our system to satisfy. Because in this way, the trustworthiness of a user will be large if the ranks of objects that he voted for have large uh, scores, and vice versa, the scores of objects will be large if the voters who voted for these objects have high trustworthiness. Now, just like with Google, what's the problem here? The problem is that there might not be the, the uh, unique solution <coughs> to these uh, <coughs> equations. Uh, to make the solution unique, we have to do a tweak that is kind of natural, but to be honest, uh, the tweak was introduced so that the proof of convergence works. Right? How do we fix the problem? We define instead, so we keep this as is, and instead of this, right, we slightly tweak this by normalizing it. So instead of this, we have the following definition. Uh, we have that a row Li is equal to um, a weighted average of all trustworthiness. So this will be sum of over all R's that voted for Li, TR, divided by square root of a uh, uh, sum over all objects i on the list. So i bigger or equal than 1, smaller or equal the number of items on list L. Of this sum are errors. Uh, uh, OK, so instead of i, I should use j, uh, L, J, and instead of R, let me uh, use, uh, you see, R is just a dummy variable, so I guess I can keep R. So it's uh, D, uh, R, uh, and then this squared. So, what does this guarantee? This guarantees the following property that for every list L, uh, sum of rho L j uh, squared uh, for all j between one and number of items on the list is equal to one. So this prevents things from exploding. So what, so what is this? This is essentially the following. So let's 
You simply compute the ranks as this simple sum. You get all of the sums for each object. And then you divide everything with some of the squares of whatever you got for each object. Is it clear? Right, so for example, if, uh, let's uh, just give a numerical uh, example. Uh, okay, I'll have to be Catholic for a while. I have to kneel and confess. Um, so let's see, uh, say, if the, there are two voters, um, or three voters, say uh, we have R1 uh, and the trustworthiness of R1 is say 1.5 and trustworthiness of R2 is say equal uh, to 2.5 and trustworthiness of R3 is say equal 0.5 uh, and you have the following you have only two lists L1 and L2 and each list has only three items so I1 on the list L I2 uh, and here I3 and uh, the same here uh, you have uh, uh, I, I guess I should put one on the superscript because it's list one. On list two, you also have only uh, uh, three items. And assume that voting is as follows. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the voter uh, R1, this is the voter R2, and this is the voter R3 and they voted as follows. R1 here votes for I3. R2 also votes for I3, but R3 say votes for I1, right? Uh, so let's now compute on this list what the ranks will be. Well, ranks by a simple way will be sum over all R's uh, that voted, so this is uh, uh, item uh, one on list one, right? So this will be all voters R that voted for one, one, right? For uh, item one, one, or maybe I should just write I one comma one like this and then trustworthiness of voter R. Uh, what is this? What are the R's that voted for item 1-1? One, one? What is the only R? R3. R3. So this will be simply trustworthiness of R3 by a simple, non-normalized way. Let's see what is uh, raw uh, two, uh, one. What is the corresponding sum R on list uh, one for object two T R? What is this? On object, sorry, this is uh, uh, one, two, like this, one and then two. So what are the voters that voted for item I2? Zero. No one. Zero here, right? Uh, how about a row of uh, one, three? What is this, uh, what is the sum uh, R, oh my, uh, voted for I, ah, voted for I, on the list one for item three, TR. What is this? It's a TR uh, R, uh, one plus TR two. So what are these values? Well, these values are uh, row one one 
is equal to trust of R3, we said, assume that it is 0.5. Uh, rho 1, 2 is equal to 0. Rho uh, 1, 3 is equal to sum of 1 and 2. So it's 1.5 plus 2.5, which is uh, 4. Now, these are, so to speak, raw, uh, raw ranks. For the purpose of convergence, we want to normalize them so that sum of their squares is 1. So then, OK, let me put stars here uh, that these are raw ranks, right? They are un, uh, unnormalized uh, ranks, right? So now, we have to compute some of the squares. So sum of the uh, rho, uh, of uh, rho one one star squared plus uh, we don't need sigma. Let's write it explicitly uh, plus rho uh, one two squared plus rho one three squared is equal. 0.25 plus 0 plus 16. So the real ranks, if you can move it, the real ranks will be rho 1, uh, 1 is equal to 0.5 divided by square root 16.25. Uh, rho 1, 2 is 0, and rho 1, 3 is equal to, um, to what? Uh, 4 divided by square root of 16.25. Right? What is uh, rho 1, 1 squared plus rho 1, 2 squared plus rho 1, 3 <coughs> squared. Well, this is 0.25 over 16.25 plus 16 over 16.25, which is equal 16.25 over 16.25, which is equal to 1. So simply, the ranks of all objects are simply some of the trustworthiness of the voters. But then all these ranks are normalized, rescaled, so that their sum of the squares is 1. The only reason why we do that well, it prevents explosion of ranks, right? Because uh, trustworthiness will be large if the rows are large. And then when you here add large trustworthiness, this would cause ranks to diverge, to become infinite. So for that reason, we keep ratios of the ranks of all items the same. So ratios of here are precisely the ratios of the sum of trustworthiness. We just normalize them so that they sum up to 1. OK? Are you with me? Yes. OK, good. OK, look, don't let me do stuff you don't understand. Stop me and ask me, because there is, you are wasting your time if you get lost. And don't be shy. I mean, it's ridiculous. So even if you, if you didn't understand something, you haven't seen enough math before. It doesn't mean you are done. OK? Yes? Why do we divide it by the square root of uh, the, their uh, trust worth of the voters? OK, because uh, where is the formula? It's uh, Oh, I didn't. Uh, okay, so instead, ah, okay. So this is un. So what is this? This is here. 
this is rho Li star, right? Unnormalized. Just sum of trustworthiness of all guys that voted. What are these guys? So, so let's do it. So essentially, rho of Li he, uh, simply says is equal to rho star Li divided by square root of the sum of rho Lj star squared when j ranges over all objects uh, on the list. Right? So what is rho star of Li? It's just rho sum of trustworthiness of all raters R that voted on the list L for this item I. Yes? Uh, so NL here represents the number of items on the list, yes. not the number of lists. No, N, L, N sub L is the number of items on list L. Right? So this is clear. This is simply, here is the item, and these are the voters. So this is item on the list. L, item is I. Right? Here are the voters uh, R, M1, R, M2, and so forth. R, M, K, maybe. Right? And uh, the raw star is simply this. Sum of trustworthiness, so this will be T, R, M1, T, so T, R, M, K, if these are the voters, and these are their trustworthiness, right? So the rank rho I is simply, the rho rank is just sum of the trustworthiness of all voters that voted for that item. And then we go an extra step to make the algorithm converge we normalize these by sum of the squares of rows of all elements on the list. Right? This is simply, uh, so if this is the list, and these are all the items, so this is uh, uh, item uh, I on the, how, how shall we write it, on the list L, uh, uh, item one, this is item on the same list L, but it's item two, this is item on the list L three, all the way item on the list L, the last now it will be N sub L, right? So uh, all what we are doing, we are summing up the raw ranks. Uh, so it will be sum of L uh, I, so that, or Lj, which ranges between 1 and the number of uh, elements, right, squared. This is, uh, and then we take square root of that to get what we divide by. Right? So these are the raw ranks, and these are some of the squares of all the raw ranks uh, on that list. Yes? Uh, so, were the numbers of trustworthiness 1.5, 2.5, 0.5, were they cherry picked so they would split some to one? Or uh, this is, no, they can be, at the moment, they can be anything. I, I kind of just took them out of thin air. Okay, what we will be doing yeah, is uh, we will simultaneously find both rows and L's uh, so that uh, uh, this equation, so let's so, one and uh, this equation two, that they both simultaneously hold. So our aim, <coughs> and notice just what we did we have in Google PageRank. We were looking for row such that when you apply to that vector of uh, page ranks, Google matrix G, you get back row, right? Notice here, all of these row i's depend on, the, on these guys. 
right? So let's let's really write a, a gigantic uh, formula. Cameraman, have you got what I was doing here? Maybe you should at least uh, record it because people, you are sleeping, young man. You are not a good cameraman. Huh? Please do it because people that are not here, there are 70 and they're old people, and they will be very unhappy if they hear me right, scribbling something and they don't see what I'm scribbling, right? Uh, so please make sure you, uh, whenever I write something, you follow me. Okay. So notice now, now we can, in fact, write this is equal to this. Um, no, notice now, we can actually put, replace TR with the ranks. Right? So we go to the next board and we get the following. Rho Li is equal to the following big. Right? It's equal to the sum of the over all R's that voted for Li, right, of the trustworthiness of this. So let me, in fact, so let me write everything step by step so that you don't get confused. TR, right? divided by square root of the sum over all objects on the list uh, L of uh, the sum of uh, uh, all R that vote for object J T R squared, right? This is the formula that we have. So this is, uh, uh, this is the sum of trustworthiness of all guys that voted for that particular object i divided by the very same uh, expressions, sum of all these quantities for over all objects on the list. Yes? Um, so I mean, like, this is a pretty normal statistic way of like, taking normalization. Like you just divide it by this, um, well, divide it by the square root of sum of squares. Yeah. Um, however, like I mean, in comparison to divide it by the, maybe by the sum, like this one.